Hey, this is Tom Judd, Global CE Day, and I'm so pleased to introduce my friend and colleague and uh, secretary of the Clinical Engineering Division Board, uh, Stefano Bergamasco in Italy. Stefano? Hi, Welcome. Tom, and hi to everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Nice to be here in this great day. <laughs> so, Stefano, you carry a lot of roles, not only secretary of the board, but I know what the uh, vice president of the National Society for Clinical Engineering there in Italy and, and many beyond that. But tell us about your day job. What, what are you doing these days? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting, I think. I mean, uh, uh, in my career in 20 years of clinical engineering, I've been through different roles and jobs. And uh, I'm kind of uh, facing a new challenge now because after years of working as an employee for a major clinical engineering company providing outsourcing services to hospitals, I'm now starting my own company since more or less one year. We are two partners, two uh, clinical engineers, and uh, we are uh, working hard to start this new venture. And our main activity in this moment is about the regulations. So uh, we are somehow seeing the other face of the moon because we mainly work with manufacturers to help them put on the market safe and effective medical devices. And so in this new role, we are uh, collaborating with them, talking with the notified bodies, uh, talking with the Ministry of Health, and of course also with a lot of colleagues inside the hospitals. And so this puts together a lot of the experience that I had in the previous years. Stefano, I heard this crazy rumor that you're also putting medical devices on cruise ships. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, th this has been a, a, an opportunity that, uh, that uh, was given to, to us by, uh, I would say, a new friend, a colleague that I have been meeting uh, uh, during the conversations for the Global Clinical uh, Engineers Alliance, uh, Wayne Morse, and he has a company that does a very interesting thing because he provides medical devices and drugs in the most strange and difficult set things around the world and also uh, fitting uh, cruise ships. And we have a very important uh, shipyard 20 kilometers away from where I live. And because of the COVID emergency this year, he could not come to deliver some of the equipment. So he asked me if we could do that. And it has been really a new experience. We set up a monitoring system uh, for the ICU inside the cruise ship. And uh, it was uh, it was very interesting experience. Also, all the paperwork for safety to get on board, and right. then doing the job uh, together with the resident physician uh, it should be quite a peculiar work to be a physician or a biomedical engineer traveling the world while people party upstairs and you have to do your job uh, in the Keep basement. Keep people well in the midst of the party. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I know the clinical engineers in Italy and across Europe have responded in some major positive ways to COVID-19. Can you tell us a little bit about all that? Yeah, of course, uh, uh, it has been a difficult year and it still is. We are kind of facing the second wave now in many countries in Europe, not as hard as it was in March, April and May, but maybe so and so we may, must be very careful and during the most difficult months this spring uh, all the colleagues across europe in all their hospitals for colleagues working inside hospitals and also those providing external services had very challenging times especially to provide the equipment that was needed, you know, all uh, ventilators uh, and this kind of uh, devices, uh, and also to deal with donations, a lot of enthusiasm, but a lot of uh, uh, attention uh, that the equipment that was arriving was safe and compliant with the rules. And so one of the positive sides of these difficult times has been a, a really amazing collaboration. Uh, across Italy, we set up a website to collect experiences and share documents and so on. And across Europe, we had the webinars, conversations, sharing experiences again. And it was really a, a great opportunity. One of the things that as professional clinical engineers, we told everyone, let's be careful in these difficult times, is that uh, during the emergency, want, everyone wants to give a hand. 
to donate equipment, to build the new 3D printed equipment and so on. But we said to everyone, okay, but let's be careful because afterwards someone will question these things. Was it safe? Was it needed? Did have, it have all the certifications? So it's not about doing useless paperwork. Uh, it's about providing safe equipment for the patient care. And so this has been clinical engineers on the front end of this difficult position and job. And uh, I think the positive result was seeing how much collaboration was going around. That's great to hear. It's, um, you were talking about some positive trends going on for clinical engineering in your country. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, we had a very positive signal from the uh, institutions. I mean, Ministry of Health uh, and, uh, and others. Uh, uh, also as an outcome of what we have done during this uh, peak of emergency. Again, one maybe positive result, if we want to say so, is that also the general public came to realize how important medical devices are for this pandemic. Nobody ever talked about ventilators, intensive care units before, I mean, the, the men on the street, but now everyone knows about that. And this had a growing attention for our role also. So I would like to just mention two things that are going on now, now in Italy, and that can be a model also in other countries. First uh, is the establishment of a national registry of uh, clinical engineers. This uh, was established through a law a couple of years ago, so it was already a result we announced some time ago, but now the rules to register as an individual professional are uh, being developed and published, and so in the very near future, uh, clinical engineers in Italy will have the possibility to be listed in an official registry, and it, this will be very important in terms of recognition of the profession. Uh, a second, very good signal uh, has been the, that the Ministry of Health uh, in the last months published uh, two calls, uh, one to hire more than 10 biomedical engineers as a new staff in their offices, and another one specific to hire a biomedical engineer as a manager in the highest positions at the Ministry of Health. And this is also very important to strengthen the culture of medical equipment in the uh, internal offices of the Ministry of Health. And this, uh, I think, is a very good signal, uh, positive thinking for the future in, of our profession in the country. Yeah. Wow, a lot of cool stuff going on there in Italy. Um, in fact, you guys have been about clinical engineering, I think, longer in Italy, perhaps, than in the U.S., and the AIIC is perhaps older than the American College of Clinical Engineering, so you guys have been doing great stuff for a long time. I know many people's national meetings, uh, ACC, AIIC, and others have been pushed back because of COVID, but you've got some plans there for your next, next national society meeting. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, uh, we had planned our usual uh, uh, National Congress, which is a really big event. Uh, in uh, April or May is the period where we usually do that. And it, uh, it was planned to be in Milan this year, a very important city in northern Italy. And uh, everything was ready. I mean, uh, contracts signed with the venue and uh, agreements with the sponsor companies, the program, etc. Uh, but then we realized that it, it would be a bet that we could not take. Uh, and so we decided in, uh, I think it was March or April, uh, very early on, uh, to postpone it to next year. But we didn't want to leave this year without our National Congress. So we immediately planned to do it virtually in uh, November. And so we organized a special platform uh, there are commercial platforms that allow you to hold a congress that is more than just a collection of webinars. It's really a special environment where you have the plenary sessions, the sponsor uh, exhibition, the training courses, everything inside a specific environment. And so we s organized this, it will be uh, mid-November and uh, it will have the support of the industry because one thing we really appreciated and we want to thank all the sponsor companies because we 
are with us even in this challenging setting. And one thing we decided was not to do like a two full days because nobody can just follow a full day of webinars and online anything, uh, but we spread it through a full week and it will be two hours um, at the, during lunchtime and two hours uh, at the evening every day uh, with the session training courses, presentations from the sponsor companies and so on. The program is online and we also had a nice video from our president, Lorenzo Leo Grande, presenting in detail the event. And this video will be made available as part of the material for the Global CE Day. So you, you will see there all the details, the link to the website of the Congress and everything else. So we are very proud of this. And of course, the appointment is for next May in Milan, Milan hoping that the COVID uh, emergency will be over at that time and we can do our usual Congress bigger and stronger than, than ever. You know, Stefano, you're no stranger to incredibly innovative programs. I want everybody just to be remember, this is the guy with his team in Italy there that put on the incredible program in Rome, you know, a thousand registrants from 70 countries. So thanks so much for that and looking forward to Orlando. Yeah, so, and uh, this is really the good time because the call for abstracts is open. I remember as a chair of the Congress last year how hard I was pushing for the abstracts because we really feel that is a sign of engagement and participation from everyone. And it's something that everyone individually can do. Everyone can make a difference. So submit your abstracts, everyone. <laughs> right on, right on. We had a record number last year. We think we can beat it. So uh, let's do it. Thanks, Stefano. Thank you. Good time together. Thank you, Tom, and thanks, everyone. Have a great clinical engineering day. Bye for now.